All right. The solution is always to go deeper. Sometimes you are having issues in your life that if you would have the skills and the training to go deeper in Jesus, the enemy can't follow you. He actually can't follow you into deeper places with the Lord. So tonight is going to teach you how to grow in intimacy. Intimacy is what will set you free. Intimacy is what will give you the anointing to walk in your giftings and your calling. So this is really about growing in intimacy with Jesus. The other thing that you'll hear me say a lot is the way up is down. So in this kingdom, everything is almost exactly opposite of what you see in the earth realm. So if the earth realm tells you that you need to like have your rights in a situation, the kingdom realm says you lay down your rights, right? So there's it's almost always the opposite. And speaking of kingdoms, it's the favorite thing, my most favorite thing I like to talk about. If you know me, I like to talk about Jesus and His kingdom all the time. I try and weave it in in every conversation. You know, before you leave, you're going to have some idea about Jesus and the kingdom. And so we're going to talk about those things tonight as it relates to offense and the woundings of our soul. So and then we, this morning I wanted to show uh, share a prophetic word that I got. And this is what is happening tonight. You will experience it tonight. It's not just happening tonight in this room. It's happening across this region. The glory of the Lord is starting to fall in this region. His Amen. presence Amen. is getting stronger and stronger. The yes. remnant is rising. Yes. They're getting healed. They're getting delivered. They're getting set free. They're getting activated. They're moving out, and they're reaching the lost. Okay? This is how the kingdom works. When the presence of the Lord comes, this is how the body begins to work, when it's working in a healthy way. So this morning, I saw a, a big campfire, God's presence, resting in this region. And next to it, I saw a tower. Maybe the tower was about as tall as this easel. And it was made out of those children's wooden blocks. Mm -hmm. Little cylinders, you know, it's two-dimensional. Like what? Lincoln blocks? No, not those. Even less than that. Like, mm -hmm. just smooth blocks. You know, like a two- or three-year-old would build with, like, little arches and little cylinders, right? And eventually it gets so tall it topples over. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw this. It was not as high as the fire. Okay, so the anointing of the Lord is greater than this tower. Um, and, I, and I don't have time to go into this teaching tonight, but there are all sorts of altars and towers built around this region that are opposing the goodness of God. When his glory falls in a region, he starts addressing these things and toppling them. Yeah. So I see this. I see it. It's very skinny. It's unstable. It's wobbly. And I see it getting ready to go. And I'm like, Lord, what, what is that tower? right next to your fire, what is that tower? And he says, it's wrong thinking. It's wrong thinking. And I'm overcoming wrong thinking. So when his presence comes, the first thing that will start to happen in your life is things will reorder in the way you think about something. You will be set free into truth. That is his government coming. His kingdom is coming to set you free. This, the word that we've been giving over the last six to seven days is that the power of witchcraft is being broken over this region. Okay? Amen. Now, we know in scripture that witchcraft is also rebellion. So it's not just witches in a coven, like making spells and casting. It's yep. us being rebellious. That is being broken in this region. It's happening right now. This tower is toppling. So tonight, wrong thinking is going to topple in your hearts and in your minds tonight. You're going to Amen. be walking in more freedom. Not only that, is you're going to walk out with that authority and that power, and you're going to help other people receive truth, Amen. receive right thinking. So keep this little visual because I saw it topple. I saw angels come with a big, like, snow shovel, pick up these little wooden blocks, which without the authority of witchcraft, this has no strength. Mm -hmm. The witchcraft has been broken through the intercession and the prayers of God's people. The remnant is rising up. This ha has no strength, so it's very unstable, right? The only thing that gives this power is when people give it power. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is being overcome by the glory of the Lord because he's setting people free, and it's like more and more awakening is happening, and this thing is toppling. So angels were, were shoveling this big pile of just little children's blocks that really are nothing throwing them into the fire of God's presence. That's also what happens. When you get set free, the junk on the inside is actually thrown into the fire of the Lord, and it makes it increase. Amen. So as you get free, as you get healed, as the Lord puts his healing balm on you, as Jesus uses his living blood, which, by the way, is still alive and active and pursuing yes. us right now, 
it makes this bigger and bigger and bigger. So as you walk in wholeness and freedom, you are inviting more of the presence of the Lord to rest in this region. So we say this a lot in our community. You want to be doing your inner work three times more than your outer work. Amen. Inner work three times more than your outer work. Because if you can cultivate the inner world in such a way where you're hosting the Shekinah glory of the Lord, the outer work is effortless. It's effortless. Okay? So this is just what I saw. I want you to hold on to that when we're talking. Okay? There are two kingdoms. We know this in scripture. Ephesians 6. Anyone familiar with Ephesians 6 where it lays out this great battle? And we're told that we're not fighting flesh and blood. What are we fighting? Principalities. We're fighting principalities and powers. So we have to keep that in our mind when we have this conversation. Okay? Now, if we're in a battle, we're in a war, we know that we're being opposed. We're being opposed by the enemy which is made up of Satan and his principalities and powers and all sorts of ranking levels of demons, right? So this, there's an army that's very organized that is studying the people of God. And they are very committed to making sure that we do not reach our destiny. Mm-hmm. It is all they think about. They don't sleep. They don't eat. That's all they think about is making sure we do not reach our destiny, number one. And he's going hard after women because we nurture life. Yeah. We nurture the next generation. Mm-hmm. We bring children into the world. All of these things. So sometimes when you feel like, man, you're getting it harder maybe than uh, your brother or your mm-hmm. father or there's something to that, right? The enemy mm-hmm. is hard charging after women, which is why tonight it's going to set you free. Mm-hmm. Okay? So he, being the Lord, Jesus, gave us a battle strategy on how to overcome this onslaught of the enemy in our lives. So can someone look up Romans 12, 14 and read it out loud for me? And then just let us know whatever translation you're reading out of. Uh, Everyone bags on the, like, um... The phone Bibles, you know, yeah. everyone's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, they get it faster. Yeah. 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 I'm just saying, I'm making myself feel bi- better because I'm on my phone Bible all the time. Yeah. Um, 12 and 14? Yeah. Uh, bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. That's ESV. So what What are we supposed to do? Bless, bless those who persecute Bless and do not persecute. Do not, do not, do not curse them. All right, so we got our marching orders. Simple, right? This is how we overcome. Bless, do not curse. And that's really easy for people we love. And it's a whole lot different for people that hurt us. So tonight we're going to talk about how God worked this out in my life. How the Holy Spirit began taking several pieces of scripture and weaving them together in my heart and my mind in a tapestry of about six months that he gave me a very specific battle strategy on how to overcome offense. If the enemy is studying you and he's trying to keep you from reaching your destiny, he's going to come at you with offense. He's going to lock you up by you being offended, and it's usually going to start with the people you love the most. If you're married, it's going to be your husband or your children okay, or your best friend. Um, If you're in a close Christian community, it may be in your community, right? This is why New Testament authors are telling us over and over and over to cherish unity. Okay? These are the ways that the enemy is coming at you. So I'm going to start to tell you a story of my my treasures of war that I won. So I was um, one of the groups that we have is a women's Bible study, but it's run in a way that that it's very classical, so that you come in and you read scripture together and you pull out truth together. So it's not like you're studying beforehand. You're just coming real time with the word, kind of feasting on it together and finding truth. We had just gone through Philippians, and the verse, consider others better than yourself, just hit me. It gathered me in my heart in such a way where I was like, <clears throat> that one is, is a little bit tough because it really, like the Bible actually is wanting you to do these things. It's not just theory wanting you to actually know how to consider others better than yourself. And so this thing began to weave into my my being where everywhere I went, when someone would come to me with something that maybe wasn't my idea or wasn't what I wanted, I would say, consider others better than yourself. 
Consider others better than yourself. And that would put me in a heart stance where I would just say, I don't need my way. I actually am going to defer to them. Okay? So this is the first thing that started coming at me was consider others better than yourself. So one of the things you need to understand about the enemy, if he's studying you, he's looking at the fractures in your soul. Okay? So your soul is defined by your mind, your will, and your emotions. And so he's looking at you. He can see a pillar of light, but he can see your flesh form around it. And he can see, oh, when she was six, her mom said something to her. She has a gaping wound around rejection. So if I can just put every firepower I have at rejection on her, she will be so offended and so in disunity, she will never get out into her destiny. So he's like, hey, boys, hit her with all you've got on that rejection. Go, go, go. Don't stop. Keep her in the corner. Okay, this is real time what's happening in the unseen realm. So you understand when you're offended, it's an opportunity to grow because the enemy is studying you and he wants to keep you stuck. Okay? So um, when I started getting this, I started to notice that the people I loved the most would begin to do things that would offend me. And I would want to... I would want to say something snarky. Do any of you guys say something <laughs> snarky? Sorry, like, no. never, never, yeah. never. Yeah, but like, okay, so I'm being really real because there's there's two kind of two sides to one coin. You either walk with rejection or you walk with shame. But they're this they're two sides of one coin. Some people deal really hard with rejection based on your your formation, other people work really hard with shame. So, like, I have a hard time relating with people who deal with shame a lot because I don't deal with that. I deal with rejection, right? So it's important when you're ministering to people to understand, like, ooh, what, what tact are they walking in so that you know how to minister to them, how to help them, right? So rejection is my thing. So, so Stephanie could say to me, you know me well. What's something you could say to me because you could do it? <laughs> like something that would yeah. trigger that? Yeah, something because she knows. Oh. Yeah, I know I told you for the last few weeks I was going to meet you here, but I, but I, something else came up. And she didn't come. Yeah. Okay, so I'm like, she really doesn't love me. <laughs> she really doesn't care what I'm doing. Like, other things were more important. Well, girl, you went there, didn't you? Because <laughs> right? she, cause she, now we've been walking in close community for so many years, like, she'll know it immediately, and then she'll even say, like, Oh, you were triggered, girl. Like you, you need to, you need to like work it out, like work it out, right? Just, we won't let each other get away with it because yes. now we know this. That's what's walking in unity is happening. So, someone in our community who I love very much says something that offends me, and I say something snarky. And the minute I say it, like the verse comes back: consider, consider others better than yourself. And I was like, mm, like I was just so mad at myself. I'm like, I love her. I know she did not mean anything by that statement. Why did I have to say this thing? And I was like, okay, Lord, I'm not lining up to your principles in scripture. Let me try again. Let me try again. Let's do it again. Give me another test. This is why I like to say to pass the test. Let me try again. Next time I'm going to pass it. Two days later, another friend that I love very much. This time it's a text with a picture. And I'm like, boom, it hits me. And I'm holding it all in. And I hold it for about 45 seconds, which is self-control growing. Can you cheer for me? I got 45 seconds. And then, boom, like, snarky comment came out. And I was like, oh, Lord, help me. Like, I was not able to consider her better than myself. So this piece of scripture is working in my life where I'm realizing I don't know how to consider others better than myself because I have this rejection thing that needs inner healing and I don't have the practical principles on how to actually engage with this piece of scripture that's truth you have to be able to take scripture and then do scripture and then you don't leave that piece of scripture until you can do it so maybe you're in Philippians for a year and a half because you are like I'm not leaving this until I do it mm -hmm. and I do it and I do it and it becomes effortless mm. because once you do that you have won a battle that then you can move to the next phase of training in your destiny mm. because I promise you you will not reach the things in your life that God has for you if you're walking around in woundedness and in offense all the time mm. so this is 
the 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 key that really pushed me over the edge was when I when I had that second kind of opportunity to to do this. I was like, Lord, that was about a C plus. Okay, now this might offend you when I say this, but I grade myself because I understand I'm being studied. I'm getting a test in order for me to reach my destiny. I need to pass these certain tests because I want to move on to the next test. I don't want to stay in first grade forever. <laughs> right? Do yeah. you? Right? Well, for a really long time. No, first grade? <laughs> yeah. 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 I teach right. first grade. I'm just joking. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you want to be able to advance. You yeah. want to be able to <laughs> advance, <laughs> right? The whole point is is. Maturity, <laughs> advancing and maturity. So the third time this test came, and this one was, was just really, really, really intense. Now, let me explain to you. Before this third one came, I had really been understanding that this was a test, that I should be able to take pieces of scripture, I should be able to put them together, and I should be able to apply them. This is the work of everybody in the kingdom. We should be able to do this, right? So I was also understanding that I needed to be able to quickly forgive the offense mm -hmm. because I was seeing that, oh, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. Now another piece of scripture is coming in to rescue me, right, about forgiveness. And you know the little story about, um, about the person who couldn't forgive? You know, he went to the magistrate and he was like, he owed millions of dollars and he like, wept and cried and the magistrate let him free and then he went out and then the next person owed him something and he made him give him a thousand dollars and then it said because he couldn't forgive mm -hmm. he was tormented by the enemy mm -hmm. so this is another piece of scripture that's coming in where I'm like ding 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 if I can't forgive I'm opening myself up to the enemy tormenting me mm -hmm. so now I got two things going I'm like I need to consider others better than myself. And actually, if I don't forgive them when they offend me, I'm going to get, I'll have a target on my back. So I'm like, that's not good. I don't want that either. So when this second thing is coming, or this third thing is coming at me, I'm like, okay, Lord, because I know it's coming. I'm preparing. I know this is a battle. I know this is a training that I'm in. This is the key for you in your maturity. You've got to define your test. You have to know what's coming at you because you need to be mining scripture moment by moment so that you have your tools ready when it's coming because it's coming. Otherwise, you just walk around and you're constantly like in the same, you're going around the mountain again like, like the Israelites for 40 years. You're like going around the same mountain because you just haven't taken the time to define it all, right? So defining it is really helpful. So the third one came and, and I was like, Oh, oh, this one is really bad, Lord. I have to go on a prayer walk because I need help. I really need your help to consider these people better than myself because that was two. It was a husband and a wife. I have to consider them, and I have to forgive immediately, immediately. So I'm on a prayer walk, and the Lord, the Lord is like, awesome. So what do you do? How do you put all this together? I was like, okay. Okay, I'm seeing it. The first thing I need to do is I need to renounce offense because it's actually a spirit study. Mm -hmm. right. like, oh, 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 this isn't me, my feelings. Yep. This isn't my little girl woundedness. This isn't any, this is a spirit opposing me. So I'm going to tell it to stop. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I understand. You're giving me authority to have dominion and to rule and reign. I'm going to tell this to stop. So you renounce. You renounce the spirit of offense. Okay? Step one. So this is, you know, this is, um, and you can use the scripture now, because we're going we're gonna to lay down theology, and then we're going to practice. It does you no good to hear theology over and over and over, and then you don't get to practice. Okay? So we're going to train together. Consider others better. This is in Philippians. Any questions so far? No. This is when Romans 2.4 came in about forgiveness. In Romans 2.4, it says, it's the loving kindness of the Lord that pursues you to repentance. repentance. Okay? So at this point, I need to repent because I'm getting offended and I don't want to forgive. So the way I get myself out of that trap that loop that the enemy has me in is I repent. Mm. 
Now, the only way I can repent, because repentance is a supernatural act, you can't just muster that up just, just by magic. It's literally, you're inviting the Holy Spirit to do this within you. So then, the Lord's saying, activate Romans 2, 4 in your life. So I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm renouncing the Spirit. Send angelic help to hold them off while I get these other things together, you know? Now, I need your loving kindness to come right now. I need you to come and pursue me and pursue them. Mm -hmm. Because what happens when we get an offense and we get triggered is we start wanting to fix the other person. We mm -hmm. want to hold our rights. We want to tell them why they did wrong. We want to tell them how they hurt us, right? What, what the law of loving kindness is telling you is like, no, 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 no. You ask the Lord to pursue you and them. The loving kindness of the Lord will work that out. You just respond with you, with what's going on with you. So in this case, when the third time came around, I knew I needed to re renounce because that spirit will keep you in so much pain around your woundedness that you almost can't catch a breath to move to the second step. Mm -hmm. So the faster you can renounce out loud, use your voice out loud and say, stop it, leave me alone. Okay, the first time something comes at you and you start getting offended by something. How many, when you start realizing this, like you'll realize how many times a day All this happens. Time. You're like, I had the spirit of offense come at me like 14 you times do. today, right? If you start you keying do. into it, you'll realize like, holy cow, I'm like offended all the time. And it's so exhausting to be offended. It's so exhausting to be offended, okay? So then when the enemy's pressing you and you tell it to stop and step back, leave me alone, you invite the loving kindness of the Lord because you know the next key has got to be to forgive, but you can't get there until the Lord comes and gives you the ability to repent. Okay, so this is Romans 2, 4, activated in my life. So when this third offense came, I was like, Lord, would you, would you have your Holy Spirit come and let your kingdom government fall on this situation where there is offense so that I can be free and they can be free? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, based on the scripture of binding and loosing, if you get all up in, in the the government of Satan, which is like offense, bitterness, judgment, all that stuff, you bind them up and you bind yourself up. So everyone's yep. walking around like this. Yep. Nobody can, and you can pray all you want, like, Lord, help us, Lord, help us. And he's like, I want to, I, I will, but you bound everything up. It's just going to take me five times as long. Yep. Like, let's work together so I can move faster. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in this situation, and this happened to be, and so I will give full disclosure because they know this. I told them this last week. They were on a free vacation in a, a, out fishing on the sea and sending me all these like amazing, and, and people took their children to watch their children with no problem. And they are out, you know, enjoying life and the freeness of their free life and the freeness of all the stuff. And I'm like, I'm working 60 hours a week. I never had anyone give me a free vacation. You know, you get all this offense, all of this stuff coming up. And I'm like, Lord, will you help me? Will you help me? Where am I wrong in this? Where am I wrong? And the Lord's like, look at all these other things that I gave you. Mm -hmm. Because you're comparing yourself. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to compare because comparison makes you feel like you're in lack. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, shoot. Like, mm -hmm. this is a gift to them that you gave them, and I just vomited on it mm -hmm. out of selfishness and pride. And that's sin. And I am so sorry. Will you forgive me, Lord? Because he rightly ordered me. He got me to the truth pretty quickly. So then I could move to the third step, which is forgiveness. Okay? After you have the kindness of the Lord, come to repent and forgive. Now we know in scripture, you know the famous scripture about what you bind on earth, you bind in heaven. What you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. Okay? That's talking about principalities and powers. Right? And so you can bind principalities and powers on earth and in heaven. They'll leave you alone. And you can lose things on earth, like the kingdom of God and his government, on earth and in heaven to move in, to move quickly to establish his kingdom realm in that situation. Okay? So we're repenting, we're forgiving. Now the Lord brings in this last piece of scripture where he's like, now I want you to Romans 12, 14 this situation. Now, what was the battle strategy? Look how, look how many pieces of scripture it took for me to get to the actual strategy that he gave us to start. What's the battle strategy? Bless. Bless and do not curse. Now, let me, let me show you how this actually plays out among women. Because we can sit down in our little mud puddle 
and we just need to tell our we just need to tell our friend because it will make us feel better. I just want to tell them the way my husband was to me. It'll make me feel better, right? And what we're doing is like we're chaining up, locking. We're just throwing all sorts of like we're throwing bleach in our garden instead of actually working the steps so that we can get to the battle strategy. Because when you get to this battle strategy, bless and do not curse. What you're doing is you're taking dominion with your mouth and you're advancing the kingdom of God. You're pushing it forward in a practical way. It's actually moving. The kingdom is alive. It moves, right? So we're going to move to an inner healing portion. And Steph's going to take this, this, because you cannot go into deeper levels in your soul for inner healing until you understand this stuff. And right now I know the Lord is talking to you. And some of you right now are understanding there's a place of bitterness or judgment or unforgiveness in your life around a situation, around a person where you're bound up. And you are actually in the process of soft kind of cursing them because you're so offended and so upset with, with, with how you've been hurt. You need to back up a few steps and realize that a spirit has been opposing you yep. and binding you up. And that there is an ancient path, an ancient biblical path to take you to freedom. Because once you're able to move through these steps really quickly, and when you train in this, you can get to where you can do this in about 30 seconds. Amen. You really can. And sometimes we'll call each other. We're like, that was a big one. Like, I'm so offended right now. I, I need a prayer support. Like, can someone come in and work the steps with me? We got to start. And you just start, you know, we'll be... However we need to do it. You have to call someone who's willing to hold you accountable to this, not to get on the cursing train with you. Yeah, like, yeah, girl, they shouldn't have done that to you. Like, no, 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 no. No. We're we're like, yeah, well, yes. We're like, right away we start calling it out. We're like, "Uh uh-oh, that spirit of offense is coming hard. And and actually, when when you know somebody and you love them enough, you can say that spirit of offense is coming because of the rejection in your life from when you were six. We're going to stand together against it, mm-hmm. right? And we're going to go after it together. Mm-hmm. You start renouncing. You start telling all of the spirits to stop. Leave you alone. I'm a child of the king. You're out of bounds. You're not allowed to be here. Stop. Be quiet. You have to use your mouth. You have yes. to be quiet, right? Because I'm going to line up with the word of God, which is superior to you and your mm-hmm. lies, which says I consider up others better than myself. So right now I'm going to consider my husband better than myself, mm-hmm. even though he didn't whatever. I consider him better than myself. And just right based on that, you have to shut up and be quiet. Leave me alone. Right? So you just like you tell a dog that's like coming up to like nip at your stop. Yep. Go away. Yep. You're not allowed here. Right? Then you move to loving kindness. Lord, there's some place I'm out of bounds. You know what it means to be out of bounds? It's called trespasses. Mm. Okay? There's sins, there's transgressions, there's iniquity, and there's trespasses. Trespasses is to be out of bounds of the will of God. Okay? So you need to know where are you out of bounds. Because if you're out of bounds, like you're in the kingdom of darkness and that, like, that's open, like to attack. Yeah. Right? You want to pull everything in, like hidden in the cross. Loving kindness. Pursue me and pursue the person. Now, this can work with whole entire institutions. We've done it for entire, like for instance, we're, we're a little microchurch body. So we have lots of little microchurches that work around. And sometimes the big church doesn't like us. And they'll say really unkind, hurtful things about us. Um, and, and even like big established pastors will be very, how do we say this, with honor. They will, misunderstand. they will misunderstand our call and our walk. And so we have to, as a community, literally like lock it down. We're like, okay, y'all, we got to bless them right now. Like we are not going to be offended. We are not, none of those things, right? So you can, we've done it for entire congregations that have, basically spoken against what God is doing among us and bless them and, and seen like explosion happen in their church. Okay, this is real. You can do it uh, like her job. Her job was like opposing her terribly. We started working these steps and it was like boom, boom, boom. God opened the door for her to walk out with honor, gave her a new job with like a $5 an hour raise and set her up like closer to, like you, you, we're not that good. Yeah, we're, we're not even that good to know how to pray that. Yeah. All we know to do is we want the kingdom of God. We want his government to come and order something correctly because he will choose perfectly. His government is perfect. That's what we want. Loving kindness. 
Repent and forgive. Forgiveness is key. You've got to be willing to forgive. This is where inner healing comes in because forgiveness is hard. It's a supernatural act. You have mm-hmm. to be willing to forgive. As you forgive, then you move to battle strategy. If you, My biggest heart is for ladies, as you read scripture, I want you to look at battle strategy. I want it just to highlight for you. I want every day you're in scripture, you're like, this is a battle strategy. Like this isn't just pretty words or a good story. This is a weapon I can use to advance in my sphere of influence, in my, in my little garden, in my territory that I'm called to serve, okay? Battle strategy is Romans 12, 14. That's, that's the directive. This is just getting you to where you can do this with authority, okay? After you do this, then be expectant. We're always looking to see where did the kingdom move, okay? Now, this is what we've discovered as we've worked this in real time. Using the word of God, using scripture as they're woven together to walk an ancient path of knowing how to do this battle strategy. We have seen, based on how close the person is with the Lord, we see how quickly they'll turn. So there was a situation where my daughter was in a certain situation. She had two people hard, hard, hard on her, right? And we were choosing to, to do this battle strategy. And out of, the, out of the two people, it took one person five months before they, returned, before they turned and repented to her because they were out of balance, but we did not judge. We blessed, we blessed, we blessed, we blessed, we blessed. We blessed until it hurt. We were the work of the cross. It's like, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they're doing. They are tyrannized by the enemy. They are, they are agents of darkness. They don't understand. Bless, bless, bless. We will not curse them because if we curse them, it's like we're drinking bleach. We, we don't want to do that. In this kingdom, we don't drink bleach. We're, we're too wise for that. Yes. Right? Babies drink bleach. Babies need to be protected from drinking bleach. But wise queens who are ruling and reigning with authority... We know not to drink bleach. Mm -hmm. Then it took nine months for the second one to come around. So my daughter and I were talking about this. I was like, actually, the one that only took five months is closer to the kingdom than the one that took nine months. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the kingdom is alive. You do it. You do this work, and then you walk away. You go have a Coke. You keep loving your life and doing the next thing. The kingdom actually is staying there, and it's working. Mm -hmm. It's working. The God's government is like... Moving, moving, moving. So you may have something like a situation in your life where you keep working these steps and it may take you a minute before you see something turn or you might see it within an hour. Like we've seen it also happen with you do this and within one hour we're getting a text yeah. or a call. And we're all rejoicing. We're like, look how fast the kingdom moved on this one, right? So it's, it's a Crazy. really fun, exciting. The solution is to go deeper and intimacy. The key to inner healing is understanding how to work these steps so that you're into this battle strategy. But we're so bound up in our soul through unforgiveness, through wounds, through areas that we can be compromised by the enemy that we need to bring in the inner healing component. And so this is where I'm going to transition to steps. I want to ask a question first. I want you to touch on one thing. I feel like Mm -hmm. this whole thing kind of stops and gets derailed when you talked about being out of bounds and the trespasses. Because at that point, Mm -hmm. if we don't... Please elaborate on Uh what a trespass or trespasses looks like. Because I think we can all hear that, Uh but I don't think we're really thinking of just the practical things that could be trespasses that because that's where it stops that's where it gets derailed yeah is what i'm yeah, saying all yeah. these steps is when we're out of bounds and satan has the right yes the to legal stop right. it right so explain some trespasses to us like okay just examples maybe okay so the lord started opening this up for me maybe two weeks ago he he had me start to define terms it's really good all you homeschool moms who like have your kids define terms like it's really powerful so he had me start defining sin, iniquities, uh, trespasses, and transgressions. And then this, just this defining of these terms opened up the verse in Isaiah where it's like he was bruised for our iniquities, he was crushed for our transgressions. I was like, this verse is about inner healing. Like it's about like saving our souls, but it's about healing us as we go. I mean, because once you start to understand 
that trespasses and transgressions are like active things you're choosing moment by moment mm -hmm. to walk out of the goodwill of the Father, which is why studying scripture is so important because you need to know what the will of the Lord is. It's like, I, you know, I was almost 50 years old before the piece of scripture, consider others better than yourself, embedded itself, I would heard it all my life, embedded itself so deep in my heart that it set me free, mm -hmm. right? So why, why do things work like this? I don't know. The Holy Spirit knows when a piece of scripture is supposed to crack you open, but it did, and I'm so grateful. And I was able to do that because I, because I was studying the word in community. I was letting it work on my heart, and then I was committing, setting my, safe, my face like flame to do it. Like, I'm not leaving this till I do it. Like, if I sit here until I'm 60 and I'm still working on doing this, then I'm doing it. This is, this is, you know, it's like if I save 500 people but I can't consider others better than myself, then it's like a clanging gong or, you know, like right. all the things. Right, right. So a trespass, just like if I were trespassing in Melody's yard, it would mean I would go outside of my boundaries into her boundaries, which means she would have the legal right to call the cops and do whatever. Find me, send me to jail, come bring a gun out, get off my yard, right? It's the same in the unseen realm. Trespasses are when you, um, and sometimes you do it knowingly, and sometimes you do it without knowing. That's the thing with trespasses. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the revelation light of the Lord. And that's why you're back here at loving kindness. Like, is there anything that I know or don't know that I did? And I promise you the Holy Spirit will show you. Yeah. He will. He will show he's you. He's so good. He will show you. So the particular trespass was, I'm trying to remember the particular trespass for that one. But it's usually related to the offense. Yes. Like, yes. That kind of has the yeah, same. Yeah, it's not question. every trespass. Right. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not going on a witch hunt. You're not going on a witch hunt. Right. Right. It's, it's just okay. like related. I'm glad you said that because I was going to ask that. So. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's 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 related to being able to bless and not curse and stay within the bounds of God's good will for that person. Can I right. Hear something on yes. That? Yes. Please. On trespasses when you're dealing with offense. Um, she said, we have boundaries. This is the authority God has given us to be in a specific realm that we own. Okay, we are not in the realm of judges. Thank um, you. So the trespass, I think, that's most common when offense sets in is the enemy lures us off of our own property because he's the accuser. Yes. He yeah. wants us to come on into yes. this land. Yes. And accusations. Yes. And that spirit of offense is what they do. They're speaking accusations yes. against the other person. That's yes. what I was so, waiting to hear. It's yeah. Bait. But when That's it goes from out here, here to in here and you're partnering and now you're speaking. Yes. Because it starts out here, you hear it, but then you come into agreement with it. Yes. And then you begin to judge. All right. That's yes. not saying this is inappropriate yes. behavior. This is saying this person is bad. They should have stuff happening to them. It's there is you'll you'll feel it. There's a difference between discerning about somebody's actions right. and judging. Well, I'm them. better yeah. than they are. Yeah, when you I step out more than they onto do. the accuser's right. property, you are trespassing, yeah. Yeah. and, and that a, gives him the right to actually right. manifest everything you're judging in the other person in your own life. In your yes. own life. Yes. 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 Y'all better you. hear that. Yes. How okay. quickly this? You were talking about self righteousness too. Mm -hmm. When you when you embarked in, in the spirit of offense, because the spirit of offense is always the spirit. Taking the spirit of offense is our choice. Mm -hmm. What yeah. exactly. it is a choice? Yeah. yeah, I choose to get offended or mm -hmm. not. But the problem is, is it hurts. It's painful. And it's... you need to deal honestly with the feelings. What is... we right. are women, we have feelings. Right. Where it's not saying smash your feelings. Mm -hmm. Right. You also yes. have to deal honestly with that, or you will explode at some point. That's right. With somebody at someone. Yes. Yeah. So I don't think it's in saying... your anger. Do not sin. Yes. yes. Every. Pain you have is an invitation to take it to the Father. Amen. I think from a background where we're talking right good there. Christian girls and you just push it yeah, down, no, put a smile right. on that face, put your pearls on, and keep going. That's a good, way. <laughs> that's a good God way wants you to come and take that bag of garbage of feelings that are coming up inside of you, and He yeah. has an dump invitation. It out. Bring it to my throne <laughs> room yeah. and dump it out, <laughs> and we're going to sort through this right. together. Right. Right. Cleanse it. Yeah. yeah. There is no good. shame in our anger or anything else. There's that shame thing. Right. You know, being a good Christian girl is not stuffing your feelings. Right. Yes. Like you do not have them. Yeah, but no, it's right. also not living by your feelings. It isn't. Yes. But we are talking about a spirit of fence, and also we have to be honest with what's truly going on in our lives. Yeah. Yep. We don't know how many people in this room right now are dealing dealing with an abusive child or abusive husband, mm -hmm. and you know not. You, you don't know, know anything what about it. exactly. So I don't think anybody's saying be a doormat either. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. We're gonna no. get at yeah. what truth is and all. Yeah. That. That's mm -hmm. the next thing. Yeah. 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 
So the, these are the steps that we work through. We are actually, our community is learning to like move through them very quickly, right? Because we're like, we, oh, uh, Stace isn't here, but there's a, a gentleman who's just kind of coming into our orbit where he, he's just starting to get this. And he's like, I'm offended all day long. I have like 15 yeah. offenses all day long. He's like, this is powerful. This is amazing. I can't believe, you know, these are just, this is, this is a battle strategy to help you get to where you're seeing the kingdom move and you have cultivated the soil in your heart enough that you can receive inner healing, that you're doing that work on the inside three times more than you're worried about the work on the outside, okay? So Steph is gonna take over and she's gonna bring in the inner healing element because sometimes, now, depending on where you are in your walk with the Lord, some of these things, right, you may be in this renouncing part for weeks. Like it may take you a good minute because the pain is so intense, right? And sometimes if you're stuck here, that's when you wave the flag and you're calling for inner healing yes. sessions. Yes. You're calling Steph for a session. You're calling Cindy Edget. You're calling those in your trusted community. You're saying like, yo, this thing keeps coming at me. It's like week after week, like I am under it and I need to, I need help. I need angelic assistance. I need prayer support because I want to, I want to advance. Mm -hmm. I want to mature and I need to get through this, right? And, and sometimes in an inner healing session, the loving kindness, like steps two and three are happening in an inner healing session, mm -hmm. right? Where you're actually, because sometimes you need a little guidance in this. Sometimes you need someone to hold your hand and help you see what you can't see mm -hmm. so you can move to here. And then when you get to this point, right, bless those that curse. This is a very active, out loud, with your voice. You are blessing that person or that situation with every single thing you want. Everything you want. Right? Because the offense that came, the hardest one that came at me the last where I finally like, cracked the code and I was like, I'm free. It came at, I wanted that vacation. Mm -hmm. I wanted that free vacation and someone watched my kids. Right? And I was so offended. And then I'm like, Lord, bless them. Bless them with 10 more free vacations. Right? Oh so you learn how to bless, bless, bless with really what you want. And then things just start cracking open. And you start seeing the kingdom move so quickly. And so our relationship with this couple like went like from here to here in depth, like mm. because we, I was willing to do this. And then it's like we were close before and now it's just like we're, mm. right? Okay, so I'm gonna pass it off to Steph and she's gonna leave because we're gonna go from theory because now we're gonna start to practice. So yeah. are any of you getting some things in your heart and your mind like where the Holy Spirit is like yep. knocking, <laughs> knocking at the door? Okay. Yay, that's good, rejoice. The Lord is coming to set you free, right? It's like his loving kindness pursues you to repentance, right?